Shalom, shalom, praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Charlie G. This is Slice of Today. Thank you very much for tuning in for Slice of Today. I know and I do believe you're going to be blessed by the word of the day. And yeah, my friend was sharing about <clears throat> the story of Jonah. Uh, in the book of Jonah, the story of Jonah, we, uh, we read of how the Lord appeared to him, telling him to go to Nineveh. But Jonah decided otherwise. Jonah decided to go to Tarshish. Tarshish because he knew that the Lord was a God of long, a God of long suffering, a God who was slow to anger, long suffering, uh, if that's the right word to use. And so he decided to go to another place. And when he went to the other place, he wasted his money, he wasted his energy, he wasted his time, he wasted a lot. And that's the thing that happened to those of whom ran away from their call. Uh, Paul Reiser said that let each and every man abide unto his call. Let each and every man abide unto his calling. In that don't uh, don't leave uh, don't leave someone else calling but choose to leave your own calling choose to abide and your own calling and so uh, even though Jonah even though Jonah um, ended up in a ship uh, that he was not supposed to use and that everyone there who was there they got to know that he served the one and true God and so after they had few after they threw Jonah into the sea and then it, it got calm in that they started worshiping God and so I'm gonna read for you that portion of scripture and I know and I believe that each and every one of us are gonna be blessed in that God is a God who works God's ways ain't like our ways neither are his thoughts like our, our thoughts in that sometimes you may be thinking that you're wise you're smarter but God uh, but God uses you still in a, in a way that you, could, you did not expect and so in the book of Jonah in the book of Jonah in the book of Jonah chapter actually like the question that he was asked uh, in the book of Jonah chapter 7 ah sorry <laughs> Jonah chapter 1 Jonah chapter 1 verse 8 he said that they say after they are casting the Lord they asked him then they say to him tell us tell us uh, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us what is your occupation and so what his occupation is what do you do what's your occupation where do you come from where do you come from what's your occupation where do you come from what is your country and of what people are you and he said to them i am a hebrew i fear the lord <laughs> uh, jonah here says that he is a hebrew and he fears the lord he fears the lord and yet he was in the wrong ship and so in the bible talks about men with their lips say that they know god but their action denies deny him <clears throat> men with their mouth they say that they know god but their action deny him and the people are busy seeking the lord with their lips but their hearts are far away from him and so we can see the same thing about jonah in that he said that i am a hebrew i fear the lord the god of heaven the god of heaven who made the sea and the dry land then the men were exactly afraid and said to him what is this that you have done for the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the lord uh, uh, in that it was being known that he was fleeing from the presence of the lord in the book of jonah chapter one he said another word of the lord came to jonah the son of Amitai saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for its evil, uh, for, the, for their evil has come up before me. You see, it doesn't matter how great you are, it doesn't matter how great a city is, it doesn't matter how great a person is, it doesn't matter how great a nation is, if they sin, then that's against the Lord, if they sin. You see, as in God, Nineveh was a great city, Nineveh was not a village, Nineveh was not a upcoming city, it was a great city. The Lord is appearing to the Lord is appearing to Jonah, telling Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city. In that when you go when you when you search in your internet and search the city of Nineveh, you shall see that it, it was a rich city. It was a rich city and it was it had everything, it had everything but sin. That is same to each and every one of us. Doesn't matter how great you are, doesn't matter how great your location is, how great your your how great your nation is, how great your state is, if they sin. Then that, that then that's against God. Then God is uh, God can come and destroy you. And so it's for each and every one of us to um, to flee from sin, to flee from sin, and to not have sin rule over us. And so, but Jonah rose to flee uh, to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And so here we are seeing that this um, is a thing that's known as the presence of God. Even though God is omnipresent, there's a particular His manifest presence. In that how was Jonah able to flee away from the presence of the Lord and even here the people in the, the crew in the ship were saying that they knew that Jonah was fleeing away from the presence of the Lord uh, the psalmist said that where can I free um, 
the psalmist said that where can I flee away from your presence? Where can I go away from, from the Spirit of the Lord? If I go to the east, God will still find me. If I go to this place, God will still find me. You see, as in there's a place, um, there's a place that man's that is a place that man's understanding knows that here God's presence is here. Even even the story of John and Jacob. Jacob woke up uh, woke up in the morning and then he was saying that surely God is in this place. Surely this is surely God is in this place. In that this is the gate of heaven. And how awesome is it? Uh, how awesome is the how awesome is this place? This is the gate of heaven. How awesome is this place? This is the gate of heaven. And so there's a place that man on earth can always know and attest that surely God is in this place. There are places that you, that you can go for worship and know that truly God is in that place. And so it's my prayer, my heart is that for each and every one of us that we shall live a life of being aware of God's presence. Of being aware of God's presence. Of being aware of God's present presence with us. And so... Uh, and, and then in verse 13 it says, Nevertheless, the men rolled hard in that they were trying to, uh, to uh, save Jonah to get back to the dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more uh, temp tempestuous against them. Therefore, they called out to the Lord, O oh Lord, let us not perish with this man's life, and let, let and lay not on, on us innocent blood, for you, O oh Lord, have done as it pleased you. Uh, so they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased uh, from raging. Then the men feared the Lord. And so let our life be the kind of life that shall make other people fear the Lord. Let people see your God. Let people see your God. Let people know your God. In the book of in the book of Joshua, when uh, Rahab, the two spies with Rahab, in that uh, Rahab, uh, Rahab, Rahab told the two spies in that we have heard of what God has done for you. And so, and so everyone in that city was in fear of God because of what they have had he had done for them. And so let that be the kind of life that you shall be found living. Let people know of the God whom you serve. Let people know of the God whom you call God in your life. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows in that his life is like they are they are like now oh, this God is the true God. Because earlier on the earlier on the the captain of the ship was like, hey, let everyone call unto their God, let everyone call unto their God. And later on, they ended up offering a sacrifice to the one and only true God, the creator of heaven and earth, the God who created the land and the sea because of Jonah. Even though he was going uh, he was, he was, even though he was going the wrong direction, and there are people who got saved, who got to repent, who got to change their way because of him. And so I pray that God will use, um, God will use, him. it may be your ignorance, it may be your rebellion, and that may God use it for his glory and for his honor. Let us pray. I'm actually never leaving, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for yet another opportunity, another privilege uh, given unto me to share your word, O oh God. I dearly, Father, I do believe in the power of your word, O oh God. And I do believe, O oh God, that, that, that your God shall find speaking to each and every one of us, O oh God. Let your lives no longer be the same after hearing of your word, O oh God. And let each and every one of us, O oh God, repent and change our ways, O oh God. And dearly, Father, for repentance is all about it's all about you calling us, O oh God, into your ways, O oh God, calling us into having your thoughts, O oh God. And dearly, Father, let your word be seized in our hearts and be a fruit in our life. And this is a prayer of faith that we we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. And so in this month, our theme is, I'm glad I'm born again. Born, born, born again. I'm glad I'm born again. Born, born, born again. I'm glad I'm born again. Yeah, being glad that you are born again. Be glad that you are born again. And so, uh, yeah, earlier on, I did that three days about, I was lost but now I'm found. And so, and so now I'm doing... I was dead, but now I'm alive. I'm, I was dead, but now I'm, I'm alive. We already looked at Jairus doctor, Jairus doctor, Jairus doctor, and all, we, have, we have looked at Jairus doctor. We have looked at the woman whose only son uh, got to got to pass away, and and today we're gonna look at Lazarus, Lazarus, from the book of John chapter eleven verse one. And so uh, yes, also in this month we are doing the book of John. We are doing the book of John. Yeah, we are doing the book of John and so far so good and also having a 21 days of praying and fasting is my prayer my heart is that I shall be found taking part in the praying and fasting because it's very important for each of one of us as believers as Christian to key in into such moments yeah so turn with me to your um, turn with me in your Bible to the book of John chapter 11 verse 1 and it says that now a certain man was ill illness death and so you better get healed before death. Hallelujah. Amen. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, and uh, the village uh, Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister mother. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with the, with an 
ointment and wiped his feet with hair. With a hair. You see, as in hair is usually the symbolism of glory. In that, uh, in that the women surely know that their hair is usually a, usually a symbol of glory. And so for and so for Mary, Mary wanted her who appointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair in that she was laying down. She was laying down her beauty. She was laying down everything that was precious to her. She was laying it all down. She was laying it all down. And then later on in the Bible talks about um, the Bible talks about the, the room was filled with fragrance. The room was filled with fragrance because of what Mary did. The room was filled with fragrance because of the oil that because of the oil that uh, that uh, Mary had, and also this is a prayer that I'm that I I'm, that I've started praying. In that after I saw that after it hit me, in that my oil, in that let me pour out my oil at the feet of Jesus Christ. Let me pour out my oil at the feet of Jesus Christ, and so that the fragrance of Jesus Christ shall fill the room. In that a particular a part, um, in that fragrance shall fill the room because of me bringing my oil, because of me bringing what's precious to the Lord, because of me of bringing what uh, of bringing my oil to uh, to His feet. In that, that fragrance, in that let that fragrance free the true. We ought to be kind. We ought to be the people who are carrying the presence of the Lord. And also, I've been following. I've been following. Um, and that is called upper room. Yes, it's either upper room. Yeah, upper room is part of Bethel Church, if I'm not wrong. And they usually having a prayer session for like three or four hours. And then there's another lady who was saying in the year 1999 in that uh, her husband and her they used to have fellowship in their home they used to have fellowship in their home just bringing people to fellowship together they sing they praise and they're just having a, a, a wonderful time uh, having, uh, having a wonderful time in the presence of the lord and everyone who had addiction yeah everyone who had an addiction everyone was sick in that they were seeing of their sing, they were experiencing they were experiencing deliverance experiencing deliverance because that couple chose to have because that couple chose to uh, to invite people into the presence of the lord and so let it also be a thing for each and every one of us. Let us invite people into the presence of the Lord. And I've already uh, showed you in the book of Jonah, in that they knew that he was fleeing away from the presence of the Lord. In that also Jonah was fleeing away from the presence of the Lord. And so there's a place that each and every one of us as believers, as Christians, in that we know in that here God is in his presence. And you see, as in when God's, when God's presence is there, sickness leaves, pain leaves, anything that end of God leaves because of God's presence. In the Bible talks about in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy. And so I desire to be the kind of person that I carry the presence of the Lord. In the, in the Bible, uh, in the Bible, we all know that the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of Covenant represents the presence of God. The Ark of Covenant represents the presence of the Lord. And so, and so, when the Israelites were crossing River Jordan, yeah, when the Israelites were crossing River Jordan, in that the priest carried the Ark of Covenant, which, which symbolized the presence of God. And once they stepped into the river, in that it stopped flowing. It stopped flowing. So that's the beautiful thing about carrying the presence of the Lord in that things stop flowing. So that we can cross over, so that people can experience their victory, so that people can go over to the other side where their portion is, where their, where their blessing is. Yeah, okay. It's a wonderful topic. Presence of God, presence of God. Even though God is omnipresent, there's a particular place that you can meet Him. Yeah, now, and so, yeah, verse 3. So the sister was sent to him, saying, Lord, whom you love is ill. Lord, whom you love. And I would like to encourage each and every one of us and tell each and every one of us that we are loved by God. We are loved by Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, so that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. In the book of Romans, he said that when what can save us from the love of God, life, death, principalities, calamities, dirt, famines, angels, demons, life, death, in that there's nothing can separate us from the love of God, present, future, nothing can separate us from the love of God. But the only thing that separates us from the love of God is sin. And that's why each and every one of us, we ought to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because the only thing that separates us from the love of God is sin sin and so once you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior your sins uh, will be wiped away you will be cleansed you will be made whole and so you will be able to experience the presence of God you shall be able to experience the love of God you shall be able to experience the victory of the Lord you shall be able to experience the favor of the Lord in that these things are there for those of whom are his yeah and so here they are saying Lord the one whom you love in the Bible you know that John John was the disciple was, John was the disciple who was loved by Jesus and Peter was the disciple who loved Jesus. John was the disciple who John was the disciple who was loved by Jesus. Peter was the disciple who loved Jesus. And so us being loved by him in that he is jealous for me. 
Love's like a hurricane And I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his mercy and affection And oh How he loves you Oh Oh How he loves you How he loves you oh, There's no mountain that you can climb up Ah, sorry, uh, my proper eight wood is wet. Anyway, let us continue. Uh, the last song I say that there's no mountain, mountain that, that you not climb up. There's no wall that you not break down. Coming up, coming after us. There's no that sh there's no shadow that you not light up. And then, and then light that's not tear down. Running after us, coming after us. For He loves us. And my verse four say that. But when Jesus had it. Uh, he said uh, this illness does not lead to death and so there are illness that leads to death and so it's for each and every one of us to know about that but he's trying we receive our healing but he's trying to receive our healing and so so the sisters uh, but when just had it he said this illness does not lead to death it is for the glory of god so that the son of man may be glorified through it it's for the glory of god so that the son of man will be glorified through it and we ought to know that god will never use anything of the devil God, we never use anything of the devil. Sometimes people show like God wants you to, me to be sick uh, so that I can be humble. No. The Bible says that humble yourself. <laughs> humble yourself under God's mighty hand and he shall lift you up at his own appointed time. And so it's for you to humble yourself. It's for you to be patient. It's for you to love. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Yeah. And so, yeah, and still the other verse, uh, verse that say that for, for the Lord chastens those of whom he love. The Lord chastens those of whom he love. In that there's a correction, there's a correction, there's a correction. It's usually in love, it's usually in love. And we shall always know that this is a correction because they did not do this and this and this, this and this and this. Uh, we can see of what uh, happened to Jonah. He was thrown into the water, he was thrown into the water, and then he was swallowed by a fish. And then people usually like that fish, that was the purpose of the fish. That was the purpose for the fish to eat Jonah. Yeah, and so verse 5, now Jesus loved mother and his and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciple, let us go to Judea again. The disciple said to him, Rabbi, the Jews who are just now seeking to stone you, and you are going there again. And that Jesus Christ, there's a way that Jesus Christ could be stoned to death. And there's a verse, uh, and he said that Jesus Christ are passed in their midst. Yes, Christ only pitya kati kati yao. In that, uh, in that, the minister was saying that Jesus Christ passed through them. He didn't like try to push his way. No, he just passed through them. Yeah, you have seen of such movies in that whenever. And also, our Lord Jesus Christ, when the disciples were, when the disciples were in a room, the doors were closed. Jesus Christ appeared through them. And so there's a way that Jesus Christ was walking through people and also walking through walls and walking through the doors. And so it's a dimension that each and every one of us should desire of walking through. So when they had, um, yeah, and so the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and, and you are going there again. Jesus answered, are, are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in day, he does not stumble. If anyone walks in day, he does not stumble. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and those of whom shall follow him, they shall not stumble. Those of whom shall believe in him, they shall be called children of the light. And so it's a thing for each and every one of us. Have the light of God in your life. Have the light of God in your life. He does not stumble because he and because uh, he sees uh, because he sees the light of this world, the light of this world. And so he's talk, talking about the sun. But for for us, we are having the Son of God, Him being our light. So we shall not stumble in darkness. Stumble in darkness is the things of sin. But if anyone walks in the in the night, he stumble because the light is not in him. Yes, and so light, can, light, light is in us when we follow Jesus and we believe in Him. Light is in us when we follow Jesus and believe in Him because He's the light. Light is in us. And uh, that uh, I read about it. I, I've been studying the book of John and also we have been doing the book of John. And so there's a verse that says that Jesus Christ is the light and those of whom shall follow Him, they shall have light in Him. Yeah, in the book of John chapter 8, verse... John chapter 8 verse light in him so allow me to search for you that verse I know and I do believe that you're going to be blessed by it uh, 
having a light in here. John chapter 8 verse John 8 John 8 12 let's see what it says John 8 12 and John 8 12 says and the light of the world whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have but will have the light of Life. Other version says that, but we'll have the light of life. Yeah, let's let's take that. Having the light of life. Having the light of life. And so back to our uh, our chapter of today, uh, verse ten. He said that, but if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. And so we can see that this is a way that light can be in he in you. This is by having just Christ inside your life. After saying this, Jesus, after saying this, after saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. And so that's a principle. That's a principle here that we can see. Whenever someone has rest, whenever someone sleeps, whenever someone maybe you've had a long day and you're feeling um, all each is you're feeling sick in that when you sleep in that you recover. This is a principle that the disciples have, have, uh, are, are sharing with us here. The disciples say to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Not just as spoken of his death, but they, did not, they thought that he meant talking, taking rest in sleep. Then just told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I am not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas uh, called the twin. Thomas called the twin. Uh, I was listening to Joseph Prince, he was saying that Thomas called the twin, in that a twin, in that there's another person. In that, let us not be Thomas the daughter, but let us be the Thomas the other one. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, when Jesus came, he found Lazarus had already died in the tomb for four days, for four days. And even though it was four days, it was not late. As long as Jesus Christ came, in your situation, in your circumstances, Jesus Christ is always on time. Jesus Christ is always on time. To many, it may seem as if it's late, but to Jesus Christ, he's always on time. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Mother and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Mother heard that Jesus was coming, she went, Martha, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Mother said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from the Lord, but even now. And so let that charge each and every one of us, but even now. And that be an encouragement even now, but even now. I don't know what you're going through, I don't know what you've been through, but even now. But even now, whatever we shall ask for from our Father in heaven shall be given unto us. This is the day that the Lord has made so that each and every one of us shall rejoice and be glad in it. Give us today our daily bread, but even now. I know that whatever you ask from the Father, God will give to you. Whatever you shall ask from the Father, God will give to you. Just say to her, your brother will rise again. Mother said to him, I know that he will rise again in resurrection of the last day. Just say to her, I am the resurrection and the life. So let us believe that we are having Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the life. Resurrection and the life. The song that says, if Jesus Christ left the tomb, so will I. If Jesus Christ left the tomb, so will I. I don't know which situation in your life seems as if you are. You have been buried. I don't know which tribals are in your life. In that the same way like God told Ezekiel, can this tribal come to life? And then Ezekiel told, uh, t- 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 told the Lord, you are Lord, sovereign Lord, you know. And so and so it's my, it's, 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 it surely calls us into a, into a higher into a higher a higher thing in that having the thoughts of God, having the thoughts of God in the let us know the thing that God knows. And then God told him, prophesy to this dry bone. And then and then Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bone. And then rattling was being had. Rattling was being had as 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 the bones were being connected as the, as the bones were being connected. The head bone connected to the knee bone, <laughs> back bone. I, I, I don't know if oh, I don't know if if you know of the song. Yeah. And so but now, whatever, and so verse 23, uh, verse 24, 
Mother say, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Just say to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he is dead, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. So that's my portion, that's your portion. Everyone who believes in him shall not die. We shall not die prematurely. We shall not die pre prematurely. And, and better still, we shall be raptured together with the Lord in the clouds. We shall be raptured together with the Lord when he shall be found coming back. Do you believe? She said to, uh, to him, yes, I believe that you are the Christ, Son of God, who is coming into the world. That's interesting. Anyway, let me not stay in it. Uh, verse 28, when, when she had said this, as she went and called her sister Mary, saying in prayer, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where mother had, had, had met him. When the Jews were with, with her in the house consoling her, so Mary rose quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and, and saw him, she fell at his, at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so we all know that Jesus Christ is able to prevent things from, from, from being bad. And so this is another thing that we are, that we are learning here. And so that's the same thing that the disciples were in a boat, and then the storm were hitting them. One of the disciples came to Jesus Christ, waking him up, and then telling Jesus Christ, uh, uh, do you want us to die? Do you want us to die? It's my prayer in my heart is that we shall get to know that Jesus Christ is in the boat with them. Jesus Christ is in whatever you are going through, Christ in you. The hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So get to realize that Christ is in you and you cannot die, you shall not die, you shall not be buried because you're having Christ with you. Yeah, and so, yeah, now when Mary came, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When just saw her weeping, and the Jews, and the Jews, Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and greatly troubled and so here we see that Jesus Christ was human was fully God and fully human in that he was compassionate Jesus Christ was feeling whatever he, they were feeling and the same with our father who is in heaven our father who is in heaven whenever you go through loss of a loved one whenever you go through pain in that he also feel the same thing he also feel the same thing and it's usually for each and every one of us in that to call upon the name of the Lord and those of whom shall call upon the name of the Lord they shall be saved and the Lord is near to those of whom are broken hearted the Lord is near to the, to the broken hearted the name of the Lord is a strong tower that I shall run to it and they are saved and so it's for each and every one of us to always know and to understand whatever you are going through God is feeling the same thing that you're feeling whatever you're going through God is feeling the same thing that, thing that you're feeling and so it's for each and every one of us in that to call upon the name of the Lord to call upon the name of the Lord in the book of James say that is anyone uh, is anyone among you who is in trouble let him pray let him pray let him pray is there anyone among you who is sick let him call for the elders and the prayer offered by faith shall heal him yeah, that's in, in the book of John, uh, James chapter, uh, James chapter 5, verse 13 says that if, if anyone among you is suffering, let him pray in that there's power in prayers. If is anyone, is anyone cheerful, let him sing praises. Are you cheerful? Sing praises, sing praises, sing praises. Is there anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And so the usually times of using anointing oil, using the name of Jesus Christ, using the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so here we, we continue on. But that is so the Jews said, uh, seeing how he, he loved him. But some of them said, could, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? And so people here are believing in Jesus Christ. People here are saying that Jesus Christ was, he, uh, was uh, made a blind man to sin. In that, in that I know he could have kept this man from dying. And so what do you believe Jesus Christ can do for you? What do you believe that Jesus Christ can do in your life? What do you believe that Jesus Christ can do in your marriage? What do you believe that Jesus Christ can do in your company? What do you believe that Jesus Christ can do? What do you believe? What do you believe? Whenever you, if you believe it, then receive it. Whatever you believe, receive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when you pray, believe. Verse 38, Jesus, Jesus deeply, moved, deeply moved again came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone lay against it just said take away the stone mother the sister of 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 the dead man said yeah they're saying dead man they're not using the word lazarus mary the sister of the dead man said to him lord by this time there will be an an order for he has been dead four days just say to him did i not tell you if you believe you would see the glory of god 
and so let it let be a thing for each and all of us believe and you shall see the glory of god so they took away the stone and he lifted up and just lifted his eyes and said father i thank you that you have had me father i thank you that you have had me even before you said anything father i thank you that you have had me i knew that you i i, I knew that you only see me but i said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me when he had said this thing he cried out with a loud voice lazarus come out i saw your name just cast one time round he sent the disciples um, two by two and then they came saying that just cast we cast out demons we leave the sick in your name we cast out demons in your name and just cast said that i saw i saw satan falling down like lightning i saw satan falling down like lightning from heaven each and every time each and every time each and every time we win against the enemy he falls down like lightning from heaven each and every time that we win against him each and every time that we, we see miracles each and every time that we see signs each and every time that we see wonders you know, the devil keeps on falling down keeps on falling down keeps on falling down and you know the thing about falling down in that he hurt himself he hurt himself he hurt himself and so let us, let us be found using the name of Jesus. And then Jesus Christ told them, you should be happy that your names are written in the book of life. And then he had Jesus Christ saying, Lazarus, come out. The man who had, who had died came out, his hands and feet bound uh, with linen strip and his face wrapped with cloth. Just say to them, and, 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 and bind him and let him go. And bind him and let him go. And so that's it for today. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was dead, but now I'm alive. In that, Jesus Christ is calling you out by name. Jesus Christ is calling you out by name. In whatever tomb that you are laid in, whatever situation that you are that you are that you are put it behind. In that, call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name, and let it come forth. Let it come forth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and believe. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Till next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.